guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Brandon and you're watching Trigger Discipline. Today we're going to be talking about my CZ Scorpion Evo 3. It's a direct blowback PCC pistol caliber carbine chambered in 9mm. Today we're going to mostly talk about uh, how they come from the factory, some upgrades that I made to my gun specifically, why I made those upgrades, and an overview of the firearm. Now as you can see from the pictures I'm posting above here, the CZ Scorpion actually comes in two barrel lengths. One is the carbine version, which is 16.2 inches, and the mini version, or the micro CZ Scorpion, actually comes in a barrel length of 7.71 inches. Now, furniture for these firearms as they come from the factory is pretty much as you see them. They do come in different colors. There's black, desert tan, and I've also seen kind of a grayish, bluish color as well. Quick side note, something I think is really cool about the CZ Scorpion is CZ actually co-developed this firearm with Laugo. Laugo actually did the majority of the development of this firearm before handing it over to CZ and CZ started mass producing it. Laugo is actually making some big, 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 big noise in the gun world with their Laugo Alien as kind of like a really, really, really high dollar and high performing competition pistol. But back to my Scorpion Evo 3. Now I'm gonna give you guys the obligatory table view along with some video footage of me at the range with the firearm. And then we're gonna kinda of go through some of the upgrades that I chose to do on my particular weapon. <laughs> Scorpion Evo 3. We're going to do a quick show clear. Get a close up there for you. Boom. All right. And we're going to slap it back in. So as far as upgrades, we'll go ahead and start with the barrel. So the barrel is actually a completely suppressed, fully integrated barrel. This barrel actually comes from a local company here in Katy, Texas called Suppressed Weapon Systems. As far as all the upgrades that I've done to this gun and all the things that I've added to it, I have no affiliation with any of the companies. All of these pieces have been purchased by me, by myself, and most of them were put on and installed by me. But back to the barrel. So the barrel is a integrally suppressed barrel, meaning that the barrel is actually integrated into the firearm itself. So this is actually kind of a combination of the carbine version and the micro version. Technically, I suppose, the barrel actually ends about right here and the rest of it is suppressor baffling. So it's actually a really cool piece, uh, makes it super quiet and uh, really, really, really uh, does a great job at reducing uh, muzzle flash. So from there, we'll talk about the suppressor sleeve. The suppressor sleeve comes from Coltec, and the reason I got it was when I got the gun from Suppressed Weapon Systems, they had put a HB Industries uh, CZ rail that basically came all the way out to the very end of the, bar of the barrel. That made the gun really, really forward heavy. So what I ended up doing was I ended up take, going back to HB Industries and getting their micro rail. This is actually for the Scor CZ Scorpion Mini. And from there, I got this suppressor sleeve, not just to protect the uh, fit and finish of the suppressor, which was the original idea with the longer uh, rail from HB Industries, but also to protect from the heat 
suppressors get really, really, really hot. I mean, scalding hot. And that has everything to do with how suppressors work and how they mitigate uh, noise and flash suppression. So because they get so hot, you could touch that up against yourself and you will burn. It will light you up. So this sleeve is actually designed to absorb the heat from the suppressor as you're firing, as you're firing the weapon. This sleeve is actually rated for, I believe, 3,175 degrees. Now, certainly never got it that hot. But another cool feature about this sleeve is it completely mitigates uh, heat mirage. Heat mirage being when the suppressor gets really hot, it actually kind of creates this like heat plume as if you were looking down the street on a hot day. And it can cause uh, blurriness when you're looking down your optic down target. You can actually see that through the optic. This pretty much takes care of that. Now, after some minor technical difficulties, technical difficulties being that I yeet the magazine out of the gun, I'm now gonna show you some footage of me doing a mag dump through the gun, and after, actually after several mag dumps, but the one mag dump in particular that you see on film is after that mag dump, and after the magazine is completely run dry, I can actually walk up to the barrel and actually hold on to it without feeling any heat from the barrel itself. There's also no heat on the grip, forward grip, or on the charging handle, or on the rail itself. So from there, we'll move on to the, the light. Uh, this is an Olight tack laser that I put on. Uh, I'm actually gonna do a separate video on this light. This is a really cool light. It's a light and laser, and I'm actually gonna show some footage right now of me shooting at the hip with this firearm with the laser. So from there, we'll move on to the forward grip. This is just an aluminum forward grip. Uh, the reason I went with aluminum instead of polymer is because, again, worrying about heat, heat distribution from the barrel, uh, I thought that aluminum would do better uh, as far as absorbing the heat, and so far it's done phenomenal. Uh, I haven't had any problems after, uh, you know, however many rounds I've put through it, after, you know, two magazine dumps, uh, being able to grab a hold of the handle without any feeling any heat onto my hand. From there, uh, I did change out the charging handle with HB Industries charging handle. One thing I didn't like about the CZ charging handle originally was it's really small. Uh, and I got big old hands. So trying to, I knew I was going to have all this stuff on here, the, you know, an optic and even the forward sights. Uh, and being able to get a hold of that charging handle was really, really important. So especially when I wanted to lock it back. So I did change that out. We'll talk about the trigger. So from HP Industries, I did replace the polymer trigger with an aluminum trigger, uh, just because uh, I felt like the aluminum trigger would be a little more sturdy. Uh, I also changed out the pistol grip. Another thing that I really didn't like about the CZ from the factory is the pistol grip. Pistol grip is hot garbage. It is angled way too far back. It is really slippery. Uh, there's really no grip texture or anything like that. And it has this really ugly, really goofy, uh, almost like mag extension or mag well, but there's no magazine to go into it. And I guess the idea was that it's so that your hand doesn't slip around at the bottom, but I thought it was ugly and useless. So I changed it out to an HB Industry uh, pistol grip with a little bit more of uh, angle forward 
and a uh, much better texture. We'll talk about, uh, I redid the trigger spring and did a refresh kit, a pin and spring refresh kit on the firearm. Um, the trigger, the original trigger wasn't terrible, uh, but it did have about a nine pound trigger pull on it. Whereas with the HB Industries trigger spring and kit, uh, I actually got it down to 5.5 pounds. And you can see here, we'll kind of do a, we'll do a pull and reset. So there's really no play in that trigger. That's tight and heavy right there. Uh, no wiggle, no movement. So it's just a crisp and there's it is. So the wall again is right here. That's the wall. So once you put even the slightest bit of pressure to it, it goes off. And then the reset is really crisp, right about there. And what I really love about it is the trigger pull is audible and the reset is audible. On top of that, you can feel it. You feel that trigger go off and then you can feel the reset in your finger. It's really tight and it makes follow-up shots much, much easier. And the pin and spring refresh kit was really just done uh, because, you know, it's not that the springs and pins were bad from the factory. It's just this, the steel quality and the tensile strength of the springs from HB Industry were just a little bit better. They're not expensive. I just went ahead and did it. Now from CZ, this is actually a CZ foldable stock. So this actually comes with the gun as long as you're willing to uh, pay the tax stamp for it. Quick note, this is an NFA item, meaning that it is stamped and taxed. And I do have the tax and stamps for this firearm. So the collapsible stock comes in and collapses like so. And you'll be able to see it on this side as well. It does have your QD point right here. And I also added one up here, which I'll talk about in a minute. And it is an adjustable stock. And that's, uh, uh, I believe it's a three, three point adjustable stock. We'll talk about, this is a Seymour red dot. Uh, again, I'm gonna do a specific uh, video on that red dot as well. Uh, I just thought it was really unique. It was super crisp, really clear dot. It's a high, it's their Seymour high speed red dot. It's made of completely aluminum and we'll do a, a specific video on that as well. From there, uh, we have the front and rear sights. Uh, they come standard from CZ uh, from the factory. Uh, they're good sights, uh, good iron sights. I always like to run a set of backup iron sights even though I'm running an optic or a red dot. Uh, always nice if something happens to the optic, I like to be able to have uh, a backup to be able to still fire the weapon if I need to. Um, from there, we do have a, and I will show you this, we do have a 20 round magazine, and it's show clear, show empty, and we also have a 30 round magazine, 30, excuse me, 35 round magazine, uh, show empty, show clear. So the CZ is, does have a non-reciprocating bolt, or excuse me, non-reciprocating charging handle. And it does have a last round bolt lock. So once you've ex fired your last round, the bolt will open and stay open. You will drop the magazine, put a fresh magazine in, and you can either A, pull back on the handle or the charging handle to release it, to release the bolt and send it home, or you can press the bolt release, which, excuse me, is right there. Really, really neat. The gun as a whole is fairly ambidextrous. Uh, the bolt release is not ambidextrous. I do not and have not seen a way to be able to make that for left-handed shooters. However, the charging handle can be placed on the opposite side for left-handed shooters, as well as the paddle for the mag release is also ambidextrous, as you can see. Right here, right there. And which leads me to the safety. The safety 
on the CZ Scorpion is the last real hot mess of the gun. It is an ambidextrous safety, much like this paddle uh, mag release here. However, if I was a left-handed, I'm a right-handed shooter, so I'd have it set up as a right-handed shooter would. If I was a left-handed shooter, we can demonstrate why the ambidextrous safety is a mess. So as you can see here, if I was a left-handed shooter and the safety is, that's safe and that's fine, but if I'm, a, if I'm in fire, that safety is digging into my finger. And I mean hard. If you're gripped up where you're supposed to be on the pistol grip, that safety is digging into your hand. So the last upgrade that I'll mention here tonight is I put in an HB Industry safety blank. So the gun is no longer ambidextrous as far as that's concerned, but it is all about the comfort, I assure you. Again, that's beastly uncomfortable and not the greatest design. So I did do some left-handed shooting at the range with this firearm so you guys can see what it looks like to shoot the weapon uh, left-handed, and I'm gonna post that right now. So as you can see, shooting left-handed is no problem. Uh, the rounds clear the ejection port quite easily, quite quickly. Uh, I had no interference, felt no interference. Uh, they didn't hit my shoulder. They didn't uh, mess with my field of view. So a couple of real quick cons that I'm having. I specifically added this QD point uh, right here at the M-lock rail so that I could have a QD point here for a sling that also goes with the QD point on the stock. I'm really not a big fan of the QD point on the stock right here, uh, mainly because if you have the gun slung in like a ready position with the stock out, it works great to be able to bring up to shoulder and bring up to sight picture. However, if you have it folded, this folder isn't exactly, I mean, it's locked in there, but it, it comes loose pretty easily. So as you can see from the video, any because this isn't exactly strapped in or pinned in, any kind of bouncing around if you have the strap or the firearm at the ready in this position can cause the stock to open up, which will then drop the firearm and make it unsafe or even potentially uh, dangerous to the user. What I think would have been a better idea is maybe have even just a single point uh, for you know, right here where a single point harness could latch onto. So that way you could have it folded in the ready position like so and have the strap come down right here. And if you needed to, you could unfold the stock and be able to shoulder the weapon and get into the ready and fire position without any uh, interference or without any issues. The last thing I'd like to talk about is the bolt itself. Because it's a direct blowback system, the bolt itself is a very large honking piece of metal. <laughs> it is huge compared to like an AR bolt. Now, because it has such a large bolt, it does have what might seem to be excessive recoil for a PCC chambered in nine millimeter. Now, it's no more than your standard average AR 16 inch barrel shooting 223556, but it does seem excessive for a weapon that is chambered and firing a pistol caliber such as nine millimeter. The last thing I wanna say about the bolt real quick is I have noticed an extractor issue. Specifically, because this is a direct blowback, 
and because I'm running an integrally suppressed barrel, suppressors naturally and tend to run much nastier and much dirtier than your regular barrels do. Um, the extractor needs to be cleaned more often. What happens is, is that carbon gets caked behind the extractor right where the spring is. And when it does that, it causes the extractor to have uh, failure to feed issues by biting the round almost sideways. Fortunately, I don't have an example of this because right before I took it out the range to shoot it for this video, uh, I cleaned it. <laughs> so it ran perfectly. I ran 250 rounds for this video uh, with the amount of footage that I took and had no problems with it whatsoever. So something to take note of. If you're running a suppressor on these Scorpion Evos, you need to make sure that you're cleaning the extractor uh, as part of, pro I would say as part of your regular maintenance. So ladies and gentlemen, I really enjoyed making this video for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like the content you're seeing so far, please like and subscribe. I hope everybody has a wonderful night and I'll see you next time.